So you can see this hide pulled off the nails quite a bit. If you ever do this, don't use uh, steel nails. You wanna use galvanized nails because the steel nails will rust and turn the holes black or worse, get on the hide or something bad will happen. Uh, the one thing I want to say about this hide before we put it away is it's much more leather-like and, you know, flexible than the other hides that we nailed out last time because it's been through a whole softening process already. In other words, we didn't lose all of the work that I did on this before. Also, it, it was lubricated again. I mean, I did put it in egg yolk solution, so that could have contributed. This right here is the line where it was pasted down. So it shrunk in there, say about a half inch, half inch, half inch. Yeah, probably an average of a half inch over the whole thing. Yet still, it's very flat. So if this had been dried quickly without being stuck at all to anything, it would have, you know, shrunk, curled, peeled, you know, changed a lot more. Instead, it just evenly kind of like moved in over time. Slow drying is even drying because the moisture keeps having time to keep redistributing. So if we heat and put air on this side, it's moisture is gonna leave all of this very quickly and there's still gonna be a bunch of moisture trapped underneath. And that's going to make the hide dry very unevenly. And it's gonna have more tendency to like curl, shrink, move. And you know, obviously it worked very well and this is, this is great. Sometimes these will stay stuck to the board, but in this case, you know, it got very warm yesterday and just the ambient temperature is definitely enough to melt this this uh, lard on the flesh side here. Okay, I'm just gonna take my scraper here and any fat that's left on here, excess, on the surface, I want it off. So yeah, I just wanna get rid of all the excess fat on here. If it'll come off with this scraper, there you go. I want it off. And that's because I don't want any more fat in this hide. If anything, I'm concerned that there's already too much fat. As I described in a previous video, or said in a previous video, especially when you're finishing hides in tanning, it's really nice to have control over your environment. And I have no control, right? It's getting very hot. We're expecting a huge heat wave that's supposed to start today, I think. This is a great example of where I would want to be drying these hides under controlled conditions in a cool room with air circulation is kind of ideal or controllable air circulation. You know, if there's gonna be fluctuations in the temperature, then you wanna be able to change air circulation as well. All this fat could melt and melt further into the skin, which I don't, I don't want. You can see there's a fair amount of fat coming off here, enough to matter. And I really think that if you analyzed this fat right here, you'd find that it's it's different now, that it has fewer of the liquid fatty acids like omega-6 and omega-3 and more of whatever the, uh, the denser, heavier stuff that you find in tallow, more of that because it just makes sense, right? If I've put the fat onto a sponge and parts of the, the fat, uh, the, the heavier fatty acids are not going to soak into the hide as much as the ones that are just liquid all the time at room temperature. So there we go. And, you know, this does feel a little stiffer than it did. We're just going to roll this one up and we're going to make sure we roll it with the grain side out because if I decide to finish this uh, like this right here, like this would be kind of the finish is a smooth texture right here that would be instantly ruined if you roll it the other way. So with this one, I can like roll it and push it this way to soften it and it will just only stretch the grain. It won't compress the grain. And if I roll it the other way, it will only compress the grain and wrinkle it up. And I haven't decided what we're gonna do with this yet. So this is the safe way to roll it until we decide. And we very well may want to do two different things with it. And that, and that could be done at any time. Right, I could just decide, well, I like the way this neck wrinkles, so I'm gonna cut the neck off, you know, work it and soften it manually and do it how I want it for like a certain project, and I could just leave the rest of it like this. Okay, so uh, when I have time, we'll get back on these and we'll get them finished. All right, it's time to damp back the hides again. And it doesn't matter how you get these towels wet. It's just, you want them, like the, the way I would describe the ideal wetness is 
no one could touch it without telling, you know, that it's wet. It's definitely wet, but you'd have a hard time wringing any water out of it. And it doesn't really matter how you get there. You could get them super wet and hang them up and let them drip for a long time. You can get them really wet and wring them out. With these, I did uh, probably what I like to do the best, which is get them a little bit wet and then knead them. Knead them together so it distributes the moisture. And, you know, my hands are wet. There's like a film of water on my hands but they're not dripping wet. I like this method because it's easier than wringing the crap out of the hides um, by, you know, if you get them too wet. Try not to put too much. The other thing is, you know, I'm trying to tell you what the ideal is, but they can definitely be a little wetter or a little drier than ideal and still work fine. I think this could take maybe a little more water, but it feels pretty good. I see some dry spots. Yeah, like in that. There we go. Since we're gonna roll this way, again, um, since I haven't decided how I wanna finish this, I wanna make sure that I roll it with the grain on the outside. Leave it like that overnight and uh, be ready in the morning. You know what? I need the other table. Time to switch tables. Yeah, if anything, they're a little on the wet side, but that's fine, better too wet probably gonna be pretty hot today. This one is gonna be done just like the sheep hides were done in the previous videos. Lots of cabling, softening, working the edges, and just trying to get it uh, really soft. I'd like this to be done, you know, by early afternoon or late morning. So here, I wanna show you something. Up here at the neck, um, the neck on these is real wavy. It doesn't wanna be flat. And sure, I made it flat, but I can see where all these wrinkles are like packed together. And if I pull on that, look, look at that. Look how much that spreads out. These tensions or whatever you want to call them are in the leather, like these natural shapes are still in there. You know, I could have kept that flat and finished this out and finished it all flat. But then if I go to use this for anything, it, this is still there, you know, all this stretch and stuff is still there. So when I think about, you know, what do, what do I want to use this part of the skin for? And uh, how would I prefer to finish it? About there and just cut this off and soften this separately because this neck skin is really cool when it's really soft and wrinkled and the grain's all wrinkled up. And I could use that piece, you know, for something else and then finish the rest of the hide um, differently. So I think I'm gonna do that because that just makes a lot of sense to me. And again, I'm kind of going for, like I want this pattern that's on the neck and it extends down here uh, maybe to like there, so. Let's put this with this, roll that all up. So I have the same problem on the edges. Uh, here's a good example right here where, you know, I, I flatten this out with the slicker, but look at all that stretch that's in there. So I had this idea, what if I cut around the edge once or twice and took off like a half inch strip and twisted it into a rope. One problem with that is that the edge still varies in thickness a lot. I mean, not hugely, but enough to possibly matter. So I can compensate to an extent, like when I get to this or this thin part, I can just kind of cut wider right at that part to make up for the difference in thickness. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the worst of these tag ends and just sort of round it off a bit. And then, yeah, I'm just barely trimming off the edge and that's because um, it's kind of uneven. Right here, like there's a something wrong there, like a scar or something. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Yeah, the reason I'm cutting the, the very edge off is so I get like a cleaner edge. All right, and that was kind of just a good idea anyway, because now the edges are real clean and it's gonna be easier to work with. So what I wanna do is cut about a half inch of it, the edge and see like how wide that is when it's stretched out and it's it's still pretty wide. Well, I'm just gonna wing it and cut most of it around 3 8 And then as I hit spots that I think are extra thin or extra thick, I'll try to compensate a little bit. Once it's stretched out, I can trim it up. If it's not an even uh, width or thickness when it's twisted, it's not gonna twist very well. And let's, go ahead and 
see how we're doing so far by just oops there's a weak spot that's not good hmm oh and look at that the grains all cracking up too even though it's wet I'm gonna get this extra wet just in case that'll help with the grain cracking and then you know I mean I want to test it for strength so I need to just pull on it hard and and see if it breaks or not it feels pretty good there trim this to a relatively even width which is looking like around a quarter inch just maybe a little bigger we'll twist it up uh, see what it looks like if I like it I could probably get another one this long I could actually make a really long rope out of this by cutting the whole thing in a spiral so you want to put a good stretch on anything that you're going to twist up or use as a thong because it's probably going to stretch later anyway so get it over with Okay, so I got a good twist on those now, and they're, they're sort of started in the direction I want. We're just going to do, this is how most people do this, reverse wrapping. It's like taking the mechanics of cordage a little too literally. It works, and it's easy to learn, but it's extremely slow. Well, that's pretty neat. Um, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to cut around one more time, try to get one more thong out of this, and... That's a project we'll revisit and we can do it later, you know, but I want to get the thong cut off now. I think this is a good idea because this leather on the edges is of limited use. It's going to stretch out a lot and uh, I can make a rope roughly, you know, not quite that long. That's a full arm span for me, but as it's twisted up, it's going to, it's going to shrink in a bit. So, you know, I don't know what my arm span is. Yeah, that broke again, it's, it, probably at the same spot. It could be like a score mark or just a weak spot for some reason. This leather can get re-soaked for this rope project later. Um, all I'm gonna do is twist it up once like I did this one so that they're the same. That project can be undertaken at a later date. I'm just gonna hang these up. Okay, the next decision we have to make is whether we're gonna fold this with the grain inward and make it a crinkly surface or make it a smooth surface. And I think what I wanna do is start by doing the smooth option. That's because uh, we can change it later, actually. If I roll the skin like this, no matter what I do to it now, I can just smash it, roll it, uh, whatever. It only stretches the grain surface out more. Little slickery on the table surface here. I think the ideal surface for this project would be cork, which is totally doable. I mean, it's big sheets of thin cork are cheap. So now I rolled it side to side. I mean, this is working, but it's annoyingly slippery. You know, I think I do have a roll of thin cork. Hmm. So I'm gonna roll this diagonally and do the same thing, but it's not gonna need much of this at all. In fact, it, it, uh, it, <laughs> Seriously, like I don't want it that soft. You know, I'm not trying to make it really soft. I just want to break the fibers a little bit as the skin is drying. So I can just leave this out and then come back. Let's do a test corner here. So I'm gonna roll this like that. And then I'm gonna flip it like this. Just targeting this one little area to put some texture on this thing. Well, I'm kind of stretching it out of shape a little bit. Okay, I hope you guys can see that. So that's our option. We could make it more like this, or we can leave it, you know, really flat like that. All right, so I went and I cabled these hides here. Um, you, this is the neck from this, how it's turning out already. Look at the wrinklage, you know? That's why I wanted to do this uh, like this, and mostly just for this little chunk right here and how I know that's going to turn out. Anyway, I went over both of these once, oiled that one, and now this is, you know, a little bit drier than it was. Not a lot. Uh, I don't think it really needs to be worked, but I'm just going to do it anyway. And this is a real efficient way to do this kind of flat leather where you want it to stay flat, uh, especially if you want the grain to stay smooth. 
and you know it just it works the whole height at once with just a little rolling at least if there's enough friction on the table so now that we've worked that over i have a minute to take a break i'm gonna go and see if i can find some cork to slap down here or something similar that'll give us a little bit of texture this is something i want to try anyway so if it's enough friction or not yeah i can push on this now pretty hard if I want to. Before it was just kind of slipping. Yeah, not enough friction there. So I was always under the impression that the cork faced board was for working on the grain. This would obviously leave major dents in the grain. I don't want that for sure. So, um, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be enough friction. That's all I'm doing to this hide. I'm not gonna do it very much. I don't want it much different than it is right now. It's just that it could warp and it will kind of seize, like the fibers will stick together a little bit. Again, you know, like in a rawhide, like literally what we call rawhide, which dries to a very hard horn-like, uh, almost plastic, hard plastic texture, the fibers really collapse and glue down to each other and stick really hard together to form that kind of material. The leather being oiled and disrupted by the tanning process especially has way, way less tendency to do that, but there still is some tendency to do that. So that's why we go through this process of sort of breaking the hide as it dries. It's looking good. There's a few spots that are kind of smoother that I want. I just want to try to raise the grain here with this cork surface because um, this is always a problem with the hides slipping around. Yeah, that's so much better. I like the cork. There's definitely more to these than I understand. The, um, they're, they definitely made different ones with different amount of rows for different thicknesses of hides. Uh, the finer ones being for thinner hides. This is feeling pretty good. Uh, there's probably some moisture left in it, but not a lot. Also, given that this has uh, so much oil in it, a little more than I'd like, honestly, but it's okay. You know, that's gonna have a tendency to keep it from stiffening or getting crunchy as it dries. Once it's completely dry, we can still, you know, roll it up and, and just work it a little bit to just kinda break it up if it stiffens at all. Um, but you know, in general, I think it's just been, it's great. And as you could see, I didn't, it, it wasn't any real physical work and I, you know, it wasn't even a lot of time. You know, I've probably rolled it up and rolled it uh, six to eight times. And that's pro you know, more than I really needed to do. So very simple process. We'll come back when this is completely dry in an hour or so. And this one is also almost done. So I just need to keep cabling it to hit some of these uh, thick areas that are slightly damp, but it's, it's really close to done too. And this one, I'm also just gonna leave at this point. It's got a little more body than this cause I didn't cable it nearly as much. I just kinda stretched on it a little. And again, it's from this side, so it has a lot more oil in it, which again, will keep it from getting crunchy as it dries. So this one too, I'm just gonna kind of lay that aside. So I've left this for a little while just to, to dry. It feels fine, but you can see the edges are kinda maybe curl up a little bit, but it, it actually feels totally fine. So I'm just gonna roll it real quick. But if I just leave it to dry the rest of the way, it probably is dry all the way, actually. It's real close if it's not. And that's pretty much it for that. This hide is, is done. I probably will just cable it one more time. There could have been a little residual moisture when I left it, but it, it feels fine and it, it feels like what I want it to be. Just maybe these thick areas, if I cable them, they might just loosen up that little extra bit. And then this one is dry and it looks it looks fine the way it is. The next video I will we'll take a look at all the hides and just discuss how they turned out. And then I think I'll probably go through all of the videos, look at all of the comments and questions, and then do a video kind of addressing a lot of those comments and questions and stuff that it brings up because that helps me see where the holes are, what people might need some clarification on, or some, you know, talking, interesting talking points. 
Uh, but for today we're done and uh, these turned out pretty nice. I'm happy enough with everything and I'll see you in the next video.